Good morning students. I welcome you all to yet another section of 10th standard biology. Today we will be doing lesson number 9 heredity and evolution part 5. Students in part 4 we studied about evolution by stages in which we studied about the evolution of eye and the evolution of feathers in a dinosaur and a bird. At the same time students we studied evolution by artificial selection and natural selection. So today we will study whether evolution can be equated to progress or not whether evolution can be equated to progress or not and let me tell you evolution cannot be equated to progress evolution cannot be equated to progress so we will give the justification to that by using two models one is the evolution ladder and the other is the evolution tree so let's begin with the session yeah evolution should not be equated with progress now to prove that evolution should not be equated with progress let us start with the evolution ladder so students here you can see the evolution ladder over here in the evolution ladder you can see the non living things here at the very very base which forms the abiotic component to set up a particular environment in which you can see the different type of plants growing algae to bryophyte to pteridophyte to gymnosperm and angiosperm and after the evolution of uh, plants you can see they have shown the evolution of animals like from phylum protozoa to that of the topmost evolved human uh, uh, topmost evolved organism that is the human beings okay human beings the scientific name homo sapiens that means the wise man the intelligent man so he is occupying the topmost position of the ladder but is it so that human beings are highly evolved or the mammals are highly evolved and those bacteria which were the primitive form that means this was this organism which to be which was the most primitive organism to be formed on the earth surface so is it so that they are not fit and we are fit to survive in all the environment is it so no so that justification we will read and i will explain to you Now let me tell you, students, the bacteria. They are surviving in the hot springs, and they are surviving in the ice of Antarctica, which is not possible for human beings. Is it possible for human beings to survive in the hot springs or in the ice of Antarctica? How these bacteria are surviving? No. So that means we cannot say that the bacteria are the primitive organism. So they have not progress. They have progress, and they are still progressing. That is the main reason. Those bacteria are existing on the earth surface till now. Okay. So further, we will be comparing the bacteria with that of an antelope. Okay. Yeah. So let's do the reading part here. Evolution does not mean progress in every case. this can be proved by example of bacteria bacteria are the simplest and one of the oldest organisms on earth their simple body design does not make them weak from any angle unicellular microscopic organism but they are nowhere weak bacteria are known to survive some of the harshest climate like the craters of volcanoes and sulfur springs let's move on to the next part now students on one hand we have taken bacteria now on the other hand we are taking an example of a mammal over here you can see this is an uh, antelope and you can see the antlers the antlers are the horns you can see it is a branch horn you can see over here it looks so attractive correct now let us see what are the difficulties which is faced by an antelope of uh, because it has got a branch horns it has evolved it is evolving okay it is for the first primitive organism is a bacteria and then slowly organisms and evolve and reach the highest position that is that of the vertebrate and in the vertebrates that is the mammals are the highest a highly evolved organism so we have taken an example of a mammal here but here in spite of that being highly evolved it has got its own drab drawbacks let us see what are its own drawbacks Many animals have certain features which hamper, which forms a difficult part. Hamper me a difficult part even in their routine activities. For example, the branch-like horns of antelope are a handicap for them. When an antelope runs for its life, there are times when its horns get entangled in branches or bushes. This results in the death of an antelope because it can be easily caught by a predator and can be killed and eaten. okay so we have seen that evolution cannot be equated with progress at all okay 
Now let us go to the next part. Now let us come to the uh, idea of evolutionary evolution tree. So we studied about evolution ladder. The idea of evolution ladder was put forward by Aristotle, and the idea of evolution tree was put forward by Charles Darwin. Now in this Charles Darwin's idea of evolution tree. He, Charles Darwin tries to explain about our ancestors and how our ancestors different organisms and are formed okay so here you can see the your picture of the human evolution okay so human evolution we have evolved from an arboreal mammal arboreal mammal means a mammal which was living on the trees it gave rise to the branches like old world monkey the new world monkey and then you have the great apes here then they have the lesser apes here then again you have the great apes like gorilla okay and then finally comes a branch here which gave rise to two group of organism one is a chimpanzee over here and the other is a human being that means from the evolution tree we come to the conclusion that a chimpanzee and human being have a common ancestor and it is not that this common ancestor who is over here who is over here has directly given rise to this chimpanzee modern chimpanzee and modern man definitely there are some intermediate organisms which have evolved and has given rise to today's chimpanzee and today's human being okay so let's do the reading part now to understand evolution a branching diagram or tree is used to show the inferred evolutionary relationship who is closer to whom so we have seen that chimpanzee is our closest uh, closest relative chimpanzee is like our cousin because we have evolved from a common ancestor okay relationship among various biological species and other entities based upon similarities and differences in the physical and genetical characters you may has to wonder how are we telling that the chimpanzees are closely related to it or how do we say that the chimpanzees are our cousins now there is some dna evidences dna that is deoxyribonucleic acid is a part which is present in the nucleus of the cell and this evidence from dna shows that we are very closely related to chimpanzee and we have evolved from a common ancestor so it is rather a cousin for us let's go to the next part yes so this is a diagram which i already explained to you okay they have a common ancestor so let's see here now yes according to the evolution tree it is not true that human beings have evolved from chimpanzee rather both human beings and chimpanzee have a common ancestor a long time ago and that common ancestor is likely to be neither human nor chimpanzee also the first step of separation from that ancestor is unlikely to have resulted in modern chimpanzee or human being as i told you that directly we have not evolved but there are some certain stages again between the modern chimpanzee and human beings instead the two resultant species have probably evolved in their own separate ways to give rise to the current forms and when the two species have evolved in their own separate ways such a type of evolution is called as parallel evolution when two different species have evolved in their good own ways to survive to adapt in a particular environment then such a type of evolution is called as parallel evolution okay now let's go over to the next part okay so stars children we have studied about two ideas of evolution one is the evolution tree the idea put forward by charles darwin and the other is the evolution ladder the idea which was put forward by aristotle so here let me tell you the ladder idea is rather wrong and the tree part is correct the tree part tells us evolution tree that idea tells us about parallel evolution whereas the ladder cell tells us that the primitive organism have less evolved and they are less adapted whereas the human beings at the topmost position of the ladder is that person is a winner you can see here but that is a wrong statement hmm? yeah there is no real progress in the idea of evolution evolution is simply the generation of diversity and the shaping of diversity in environmental selection okay now it is evolution means it is producing new different organisms 
ताकि and that will help in the shaping of the diversity by environmental selection. We saw about the natural selection that thing. The only progressive trend in evolution seems to be that more and more complex body designs have emerged over time. However, again it is not as if the older designs are inefficient. No, at no point of time the older designs are inefficient. The older designs are very well efficient. We have studied about bacteria. So many of the older and simpler designs still survive today. The bacteria are still surviving. In spite of being the oldest organisms. And it has been arranged as the oldest organisms in the evolution ladder. Correct? So what is more correct is evolution tree is very very correct. That parallel evolution is taking place. Two different species are originating from a common ancestor. And they are evolving to adapt in a particular environment. Okay? So let's go to the next slide now. Now let's study about the human evolution. Now let me tell you students that human evolution, the entire drama or the human evolution took place in the African continent. That rather I can say the root of human evolution occurred in Africa. And in Africa some of the, or some of the human beings started spreading to different parts of the African continent in search of food as well as shelter. Whereas some of the human beings started moving over to different continents. And in the different continents, they started evolving. Okay. And that's so we have the different type of races in all the different parts of the world. But all the races are of the same human beings, are of the same species itself. So, let's study about this. Now, I'll tell you what are the different type of races here. Students, this is a Negroid race. I know all of you know Negroes. So, this is a Negroid race. This is a Caucasian race. This is our race. Our color. This color is a Caucasian color. Then is a Mongoloid race. The Mongoloid is a Chinese and the Japanese appearance. That is a Mongoloid race. And then this is an Australoid Austro race. So, these are the different races of human beings. They look so different. Correct? Each human looks so different from each other. Yeah. So, let us do the uh, read the part for human evolution. Human evolution has been studied by scientists for by excavating. Excavating means digging for the fossils. Time dating, that is carbon dating, and studying fossils as well as determining the DNA sequence to find out who is the closest relative. As I told you, DNA is a structure which is present in the nucleus of a cell. There is a great diversity in human beings and features across the planet. Example, human races. Some are yellow, some black, white or brown. So, we have seen the different races over here. A major question debated for a long time was, have these apparent groups evolved differently? Okay. So, we have the answer from the next slide. So, let's. All humans are a single species. We all have come from Africa. As I told you, the entire human evolution, the took place in the African continent. So, here it is the African continent. Here you can see the root of the evolution here. And as I told you, some of the human beings were spreading in the different parts of the African continent. Whereas, some migrated to different continents here. So you can see they are migrating in search of food and shelter. They were not grow, going in a straight line. They were going to the different parts of the world. So, since they were moving to the different parts of the world, definitely they were searching for food and shelter. Okay. So, now let's see here. Now. So, all humans are a single species. We all have, we come from Africa. The earliest members of human species, Homo sapiens, can be traced there. Our genetic footprints can be traced back to our African roots. A couple of hundred thousand years ago, some of our ancestors left Africa while others stayed there. Okay, while the residents spread, other other residents spread across the different. Uh, while the residents spread across Africa, some of them, whereas some of them migrated to the different continents. Yeah, now. The same picture over here of migration. Yeah. 
the migrants slowly spread across the planet from africa to west asia then to central asia eurasia south asia and east asia so you can see here how they were spreading as i told you this is the african continent so you can see them moving towards america the north america and south america the europe the asia and you can see them moving towards the australian continent so they were moving in different direction as i told you in search of food as well as shelter they traveled down the islands of indonesia and philippines to australia and they crossed the bering land bridge to america and this way they reached america too so this is the way human evolution has taken place and how the human uh, or human beings are distributed in the different part of the world so students this marks the end of this session now let's look into the assignment questions assignment question write short note on the concept of evolution tree all of you know the concept of evolution tree it is a diagram which uh, tells us or represents the ancestors okay of your human being and you can explain about the common ancestor of human being and chimpanzee at the same time say that the modern chimpanzee and modern human beings have not directly involved evolved from the common ancestor but there were intermediate stages too next is the concept of evolution ladder evolution ladder the concept put forward by aristotle in which we arrange the organism depending upon their complexity and when they have evolved in that the most primitive organisms were bacteria and the most highly evolved organisms are the mammals and in that human beings are the highly evolved organism next year to the right short note on human evolution how human how human evolution took place in africa and from africa how they have spread to different parts of the world and how the different type of races are there but in spite of being having a different race all of us are belonging to the same species okay students i hope you have understood this session thank you